what I'm going to do is give you a very quick way that you can have some wins every week that march you towards that identity change and help you feel like a drummer. You can see major progress in your drumming with 20 to 30 minutes a day. You just have to be diligent and consistent with your practice time. Welcome back to the Drum Show podcast. We are going to talk about practice, 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 right? Um, if we are a musician, if we are a drummer, we have to do those things that uh, drummers do. You know, whenever we start drumming, people often don't think about this, but what we are seeking is not that we're to become a drummer. We're seeking a type of identity change. Anytime we start a new habit, um, we're seeking an identity change. We're seeking a change in how we think about ourselves. I, you know, the question I get from so many of my students and for years, this was like, I kind of scratched my head at it, you know, just like I'm scratching my head right now. I actually had an itch in my, no, I don't have lice, but I actually did have an itch. Um, and and um, it made me scratch my head. And they said, when can I call myself a drummer? When can I consider myself a real drummer? And I'm like, you know, it, it reminded me of Pinocchio. Like, when, I, when will I be a real boy? And it's like, um, uh, you're a drummer now. Aren't you playing the drums? You know, you're a drummer. Call yourself a drummer. If I want to call myself a businessman, then I need to own a business. If I want to call myself a writer, what do I need to do? I need to write, right? <laughs> right? I need to write, right? I said write way too many times in way too many forms too quickly, and now I'm a little confused. Um, and that's a that's a thing. Like, do you want to be a published author? Okay, well that's a different thing than a writer. I I, I know people that are writers that have journaled for you know 30 years. They're a writer. They write every day, right? And so we need to we need to um, seek that identity change, and to do that we need to play consistently. If we want to be considered a real drummer, you want to consider yourself a real drummer, here's what you need to do. You need to consistently play the drums on some type of a regular basis. And you are a drummer. Call yourself a drummer, right? If you don't play the drums, like if you play the drums and then three months later you play the drums again and four months later you play the drums, you're not a drummer. You are a person that occasionally gets on the drums. You are a person that owns a drum set maybe. You're not a, I wouldn't call you a drummer, right? Maybe you say, well, I used to be a drummer. I get a lot of the people, I used to be a drummer back in my 20s. And that's fair to say, but if you haven't drummed lately, are you a drummer, right? So we need to consistently do that thing that supports the identity change in ourselves that we want to, that we want to see, okay? What I'm going to do is give you a very quick way that you can have some wins every week that march you towards that identity change and help you feel like a drummer. We can see major pride. And this is not like some sham while I'm selling snake oil. You can see major progress in your drumming with 20 to 30 minutes a day. And I'm not, I'm not kidding. Like you truly can. You just have to be diligent and consistent with your practice time. Okay. So let's say uh, we're going to get a practice schedule together for, you know, seeing great progress in less than 30 minutes a day um, every week. All right, let's get that together. The first thing we need to understand is why are we playing the instrument? We really do need to stay. And once we decide that, that's kind of a North Star that we always go back to. If you can't clarify why you play the instrument, you probably need to do some thinking about that. I play the drums because I'm a creative person. They're a way for me to interact with music. I'm a music lover. And for me to interact with music and interact with other musicians, I need an instrument. The drums happen to be that instrument. If tomorrow the drums disappeared, I would find another instrument so that I could interact with musicians. I love music. I love playing music. So my drums are my way of doing that. Um, now, understanding that's my North Star. I want to play with musicians. I want to create music. I want to do those things, right? Well, now I need to I need to get better at that thing, right? Okay, so now we have practice time, which is really just playing the drums. Now we're acting like drummers, right? We're playing the drums. Not all drummers practice. Can I say can I say that? Like is that an okay thing to say? Some drummers that I know, they just play music. And they don't take time to work through the music. They're just jamming to music. Well, that's not practice. That is playing the drums, but it's not necessarily practice. They're playing the drums, though. They can call themselves drummer, right? That's that's totally fine. Uh, and oftentimes we get to a level where it's like, I'm happy with where I am. I just want to play songs that I like and that I can play. That's okay. So if we want to practice consistently, the thing that we need to see to be motivated to continue to play the drums is we need to see consistent progress in our drumming. If we don't see consistent progress in our drumming, we are going to... Um, become demotivated, we're going to become discouraged, 
And we're not going to show up as often. We're not going to act like drummers. We're not going to see the identity change that we want to see. See, it all goes really back to that identity change. What's your North Star? What's your goal? What, what identity are we wanting to see in yourself? And then we need to go back to that. And if we're not doing those things that align with that identity, that we're, that identity change we're wanting with this new habit, then we're not going to be satisfied because you, you can't really fool yourself for too long, right? So what we need to do is we need to consistently play the drums. All right, so let's say I'm going to practice five to six times a week, no more than 30-minute sessions. Okay, got it. I understand my reason for drumming. Now the next thing we do is we need to set up some goals. Now you could get with a teacher and do that. You could get in an online program. I have an online drum school, but you can jump into that. Uh, links is below this. Uh, there's several other great digital programs out there. Uh, you could get with an online teacher. Like there's a, you could get a drum book. There's a lot of different things we can do there. So now we have, that's the next thing we need to do is we need to get the material. What material are we going to work on? Once we've made the decision of this is the course I'm going through, this is the book I'm working through, this is the teacher I'm going with, and if you're with a good teacher, they should not be asking you every week when you come in, what do you want to work on? Let me, let me I've heard that way too many times. I'm sick of it. They, if, if your teacher's asking you every week when you come in, well, where do you want to work on? They're not teaching you. They're just a buddy and you're hanging out. They're like somebody you go to for advice. You're like, well, what if we work on this? If, you, if Your teacher needs to be bringing you material. Um and so once we have that material, then we have our North Star, we have what by identity change we want to see, we have some goals because we have that material, and now what we need to do is we need to show up and consistently work on that material in our practice time. This is the hardest part. Actually, all the other stuff is kind of easier. The hardest part is taking the time to consistently show up and not get sidetracked. Uh, Mark DiCiani, a really great friend of mine, don't see him as much as I would like to, <laughs> really only every couple of years, but we always have fantastic conversations. He's been a guest artist a couple of times for my students and on this podcast. Just uh, uh, Google, uh, or you can search Mark, M-A-R-C, DiCiani, D-I-C-C-I-A-N-I, it may be two N's, but uh, you can search his name in this podcast and, and his episodes will come up. Um, if you're a student of mine, they're in the guest artist section. Um, he came, my students got to ask him questions. It was great. And he said something one day, uh, he and I research a lot on the brain, a lot about optimizing our practice time, getting more, you know, bang for our buck. And, um, he said, you know, uh, to get better at focus, we oftentimes think that we need to focus more. We need to be better at focus. So like he said, but the crazy thing is, is if you sit there and you're like, all right, I'm going to focus more. And you try to focus more, you're actually... You're doing the opposite. You're not focusing more because now you're focused on focusing more. You know, it's it's this it's this black hole you're going down. Um, what you need to do is get better at ignoring outside stimulus or internal stimulus. You know, we have internal and external distractions. An example of an external distraction would be uh, maybe you have kids. A kid walks in the door. That's an external distraction. Uh, some uh, Amazon delivery person drops off a package, rings the doorbell. Um, you know, all of a sudden you smell smoke in your house. These are all external distractions. Internal distractions and interruptions would be things that we prompt ourselves. And this is oftentimes the one that we do the most. Uh, or we have external distractions, and I don't even have my phone in here. That's I really don't like having it around whenever I'm trying to work or, or play music. Or, um, that's a huge external distraction. Notifications, most notifications on my phone are turned off. I don't want it interrupting me, right? Because our lizard brain's like, what was that? What was that? You can watch my kids. Every time a phone buzzes, they automatically turn to it. It could be like, you just got candy crushed. Who cares? It's not even your game, you know? But you'd automatically turn to it. I don't want those distractions, so I eliminate those distractions. Those are external distractions. Internal distractions will be you're thinking about something that you didn't do, and you need to do that. Oh, I forgot to put the laundry in the washer. That's an internal distraction. You're self-prompting yourself to go remember to do it. You'd be better off to just actually stop and go do it. Or write it down, which is what I do a lot. I keep a piece of paper and pen by my practice time I write it down. Just jot down all the things that are flowing through my head and I capture all the animals in my little zoo, my little cage, and so that I can deal with them later. This podcast is brought to you by the Drum Better Daily program. That's actually my online drum school that I've run now for 12 plus years. Not only have I been playing the drums professionally since the age of 15, I've been teaching since the age of 18. Uh, matter of fact, I talked to one of my, uh, or actually my first student a few days ago. Uh, I actually called him to, to see if he could sub a gig out for me. Daniel, love you, man. 
Uh, and he's still playing, he's still doing it on a pro level. I would love to have you go check it out at stevensdrumshed.com. You can find uh, a link to that in the show notes or video description, whichever uh, platform you're watching it on. But it truly is a community of like-minded drummers where we are striving to just be the best that we can be at the drums. In addition to over 70 pre-recorded drum courses, there's also a tech talk area where we talk about everything technology related as it pertains to the drums, e-kits, recording, doing videos, all of that stuff. There are forums where you can hang out with the other students as well. We do two live video student calls every week that you can join if you'd like to. We do guest artist calls monthly, and I'll even make you a personalized lesson plan if that's what you need. Yes, we talk about the nuts and bolts of drumming. Yes, I give you exercises, but we also talk a lot about how to practice more efficiently, how to practice better, and how to get more out of your practice time. I know you're just like me. You're busy, you're being pulled by work, by family, by friends, by other responsibilities. Whenever you practice, you really wanna see gains and have it be productive. That is what we focus on in the Drum Better Daily program. I'll have to say personally, it's been really cool because some of these students I've worked with for over 12 years, we started running drum camps last year in 2022, and I got to meet some of them in person for the first time. Those drum camps have been selling out. They've been just blowing my mind with, with how much fun they are and how uh, great a time it is to bring the community together in person. A community that was started online and has been going online strong now for over 12 years. I'd love to have you be a part of it. Great, the, the brain is a great place to have ideas. Uh, it's an awful place to store ideas and information. Uh, it, it, we have to get those out. That's why we are always reminding ourselves. That's why at night you can't fall asleep because if you have a busy day the next day because it's reminding you of everything you need to do. And that's why they say keep a sheet of paper or notebook by your bed and write those things down. Once we get them out of our head and our brain knows that they're captured somewhere, it'll stop reminding us and we can deal with them later. Um, I do that. I do that all. I was doing that right before work today. Um, so what we have to do is get better at ignoring outside external and internal distractions. Sometimes external distractions can become internal distractions. Here's a way that that could happen. You get a notification that you got an email and you read that email, it was from your boss, and they're just blowing you up about something, or lighting you up about something, right? And then you you stop, and while you're practicing, you're composing the email. I would tell her, that's, an in, that's an external distraction that has now become an internal distraction. So we have to understand who these like practice killers are. I talk about this a lot in my course, The Art of Practice, um, and that's a course for all musicians. It's just a course on, on uh, uh, the strategical side of our practice time. Um, and so I talk about practice killers. We have to understand how to deal with those. So if we understand what we want to do, we understand uh, we have a roadmap to get us there, then our job is just following that roadmap, you know. And so what we do is we show up and we have, and if you only have 30 minutes a day, you don't need to be working on three or four things, one thing, okay. We need to have one thing we're working on in that time. Well, I'm not going to make very quick progress. Okay, well, I don't know what to tell you about that. This isn't a race. You know, if you only have 30 minutes a day, I, I'm telling you, you need to work on one thing. If you have an hour, maybe then can, we can work on two things. 45 minutes to an hour, we can work on two things in that time period. But I typically want to spend 20 to 30 minutes on a topic. If I only have 10 minutes to practice, one thing. It's okay to practice for minor amounts of time during your day. Let's say you had three 10-minute segments to practice. Just practice the same thing, right? Pra not the same thing, but practice the same material. Work towards the same goal. Um, this is what's going to allow us to see progress. It's the compounding effect of, of working on material for an extended period of time, even if it's in short bursts, because eventually you're going to finish the material. Eventually you will. So I, uh, years ago, wanted to start reading uh, fiction. I, I read a lot of nonfiction. Uh, up until a few years ago, I didn't understand what not, I didn't understand what fiction was for. Like I was like, why would I read that? It's not really bettering me in any way. Um, but I said, you know what? I want to like read some of the classics. I want to you know just become like a a, a knowledgeable man. You know, I, I want to do something that was you know productive. I wanted some fiction in my life. So I said, okay, well, before bed every night, I'm gonna read fiction, nothing else but fiction. And I decided that years ago, and um, I have stacks of books now that I've gone through. I just finished one, um, Anna Karenina, which is a Russian novel uh, that's all about the you know inner thought patterns of you're at a party and this person looked this way and that one you know it's a it's it's a pretty heady read it's really thick, 
eight hundred something pages, um, and I thought, and really small text, like not not a you know not big text. It was it wasn't your seventy year old grandmother's text. It was it was you know so. And I thought I'm never gonna get done with this, but I said no, I will, I will get done with this because you're only reading a couple pages every night before you get tired. Um, but I've learned with books, I just keep marching forward. There's no race, and if I just keep marching forward. I'm going to finish a few books every year, maybe more, depending on how thick they are, depending on how easy a read it is. Uh, Anna Karenina was a pretty heady read. Um, and now, um, uh, you know, uh, I'm reading another book by one of my favorite authors called So Long, See You Tomorrow. Um, it's shorter, a little bit easier to read. The storyline moves along pretty quick. Um, and but, but the reason I bring that up is I decided years ago I wanted to be a reader of fiction. To do that, I have to read fiction. I also uh, always keep one business or self-help or uh, autobiography, biography type of a book going. I have a spreadsheet, and I just mark them off as I go. I have like 50-something books on there that are actually on my shelf that I've already bought over the years, and I'm going to read through them. It looks like I'll never get through those, but I've read like 11 this year, and I just... I just read them in my spare time. This is an example of um, just showing up to practice. It feels like, oh, I'm never going to get done with this. But if you just show up every day, the surefire way to not get done with it is to work on a bunch of random stuff. But if we will show up every day and just put the requisite amount of work we need to in, we can be sure that we will eventually conquer that material. Um, uh, a book I read... Um, well, let's talk about a couple books. Uh, one, a student reminded me of the other day, and I actually can't find it. I don't know where it went, and it's one of my favorite books. He reminded me. I completely forgot about it. I was like, what book? And I was like, oh, man, and I can't find it. I think I loaned it to somebody. Anyway, uh, that book's called The Practice by Seth Godin, and uh, this other book's called Grit, and they they dissect expert performers and, and what makes them expert and how do they get there. And they found this one thing, this tenacity, grit. They just showed up and kept working no matter what. That's the biggest strength, right? And they said, you know, you you look at someone like Michael Phelps and he looks superhuman. You look, you're like, how did he do this? How is he even doing this? But if we trace it back, every day he just showed up and did the next most logical thing. No day looked per, too special. It just looked more like practice, even if it was just a short amount of practice. And, uh, and so each one of those days built on themselves until four years later, this skill he's been working on now looks superhuman. And he, and he comes in and, and wipes the Olympics. You know, how, how it, it was more than four years he worked. But what I'm saying is those skills that seem superhuman came about by what we're talking about, just showing up day in and day out doing it. Um, Seth Godin's book, The Practice, very easy read bite-sized topics, um, I suggest it for anyone. If I was to suggest a book for you to read, that would be in top three. It's fantastic. And he talks about just you have to get in the practice of doing that thing that you want to do. If you want to learn to cook better, then you need to cook every day, even if it's for a short period of time. Okay, so that's our actual practice time, right? This 30 minutes where we have the material, we have our North Star, we understand what we're doing, and we're just slowly working on this material, confident that we're going to check this stuff off. The end of the week, we're further than we were at the beginning of the week. Then throughout our day, we don't call those practice time specifically, but we I like to pepper music throughout my day. And so I was texting someone before I came in here about drums. They're like, what's the super sensitive strainer? And I'm, here's this video. Here's the history. Oh, here's the Rob Cook book I've got. Here's four pictures. It was a student, you know, and, and I'm going through and I'm, you know, educating. Well, I learned about the super sensitive just reading in my spare time. Um, I, I learn about a lot of musicians. I discover a lot of new music. I talk to my friends about music. Uh, my family, we listen to music a lot. Last night we were watching the movie The Grinch. You know, it's it's Christmas time and we were watching. Watching uh, the the Jim Carrey version of the Grinch, and one of the one of the songs came on, and I'm like, "Who is that?" It's like Isidore and the Somebody. It's a very quirky song, and we looked it up, and we were kind of like dancing in the kitchen. Everybody was dancing, singing. I sing to my daughter every night before bed. Um, music is a part of my life. You can make music. I listen to music during my workout today. I listen to music on my way in and my drive in every day to the studio. And I usually have different playlists I listen to. Music is a part of my life. I am interested in music and drums and musicians and reading about it, hearing about it. And so throughout your day, even if that's all the time you have to practice, we can have this feeling that we are getting better as a drummer 
by learning more information about drumming, about music, facts about a snare, or maybe look up some facts about, hey, I just got this new you know, drum set. What, what's the history of this drum set? Where'd it come from? Or looking at symbols, understanding what dry versus you know, uh, the K dark line is, we could, understanding the differences between those. Um, we can become better musicians, not just in our practice time. And to me, that's what the identity change of a drummer is. I mean, I wear this shirt. This is, I mean, I made this shirt, but I wear it. It's pretty obvious I'm a drummer, right? This is, it's a, it's a kind of a sign for everyone. I also have a, a hat, my favorite hat. It says Bonham. And, and I mean, it's pretty obvious. Sometimes I'm wearing my Zildjian hoodie with my Bonham hat, you know, and people are like, geez, you know, I, I look like a walking advertising slogan for drumming. I just, I mean, I love it. I love music. It's okay. So if we can do a consistent practice time every day, even six to even five to six days a week, I suggest having one to two days off. We do that practice time. We have our North Star. We've decided on the material. We have our goals. And every day we show up and we work on that one thing. And we just keep working it and getting it better. The book I was talking about um, earlier, I think I was talking about it earlier on this episode. Um, I'm writing a book right now. My practice time looks like going through the material for that book and sorting it out. I'll be on that for months, you know, working through that material, understanding it. And it's okay. Maybe I'd only had 20 minutes to practice today. I plug right back in where I was yesterday and I start playing. And so um, this is the way to become a better player is to just do this one, one slow increment at a time. If you have more time to practice, that's fantastic. But I'm telling you, 20 to 30 minutes a day, you can become a better musician and a better drummer with a schedule like this. And then throughout your day, find ways to pepper music throughout your day. Have a driving playlist. Have a workout playlist. Have a playlist that you listen to at work that's not distracting. I listen to a lot of classical music while I'm working um, that's not distracting. Um, I have different playlists for for different things. Uh, and and I, I uh, made my wife a Christmas playlist. She loves Christmas music and I swear when I get older, she's going to make me uh, gain a bunch of weight and let my you know beard grow white, and she's going to make me be you know literally Santa Claus. Um, she loves it that much. Uh, and so I made her that place when I was on the road. Uh, you know, we had been out for, it was weeks, and I kind of missed her. Uh, not kind of, a lot. And, um, and so I made her a playlist of songs from our dating, songs that meant stuff to her, maybe songs she had never heard, but reminded me of her. And I'm always in music, so a lot of the songs she had never heard. And so I made her this playlist that said, hey, you know, a very high fidelity moment. I was like, I made this mixtape for you, you know, high school. And, um, and uh, Kelly, will you go out with me? And I made her this playlist. I said, hey, you know, she loves it. She's like, I put that on all the time. So me being a musician allowed her, who is not a musician, to have some more music in her life. And to me, I feel better about that. I feel like I'm a better musician and drummer for that. You know, I helped someone else get into some music that maybe they didn't hear before or didn't, didn't love. Um, so this is how we become better drummers and better musicians. It's just one day at a time. Just, let's just stop being dramatic about it. Work on the thing. What'd you work on yesterday? Okay, is that the concept we need to keep working forward? Okay, good. Then let's keep working on it for weeks. It's going to take you longer than you thought, and that's okay. It always takes me longer than I thought. If I had some kind of easy button or quick tip, you know, or a shortcut, I'd tell you. I don't. I'm sorry. We just plug in every day, and we do the next most logical thing. That's how you get to become the drummer that you want to be. I talk about this all the time with my with my students in my online drum school. This is This is, to me, what sets what I do apart from others. And that is, I'm very, I want you no more than three clicks on that website and get to your lessons. Like, come on, let's go. I don't want you surfing around unless you're at a point where you need to decide the material you need to work on, then surf around, but only for a short amount of time. If you want to visit the forums for, you know, discussion with friends, well, make sure you're doing that outside of your practice time. That's a different thing. Um, but I'm very pointed. I want you deciding what you work on. I'll help you if I need to. And then we go towards that. And I remember we talk on, on the weekly calls. I'm reminding people, we really need to do these things that will march us towards becoming better drummers. So set up your practice routine. You don't have to have hours and hours every day. I promise you, you can become a great drummer 20, 30 minutes a day if you will be specific and targeted with your practice time. All right, go practice. I'm going to do that myself.